We at the Gauteng Legislature, where MEC of Finance and Gauteng, Robert Kreese, has just delivered her 2016 and 17 financials. We're obviously going through a difficult time financially in the country. You know, there's prospects of us going into a, getting a downgrade. I've heard the World Bank and the IMF saying that our GDP is not going to grow above 1%. How does that make the Gauteng government um, take part in growing the GDP? And also, how do we get to a point where we reduce spending by departments? Look... Gauteng has the, the biggest economy in the country. It's, it's got one of the, it's the fourth or the fifth biggest economy in Africa. So obviously we have a special role to play in contributing towards the achievement of the National um, Development Plan growth targets. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been working as a provincial government for some time now on developing an economic plan. That plan will be launched in May. Mm -hmm. But I think that it, it aims to build on our areas of strength. We know that, that the services sector is a, is a major sector in the economy. Um, we, we have been looking at developing new manufacturing sectors that would include things like agro-processing, the green economy, ICT, pharmaceuticals. Um, we're also interested in looking at how we leverage off our mining past to, to manufacture mining equipment which we are already selling on into the African continent. Okay. Um, issues of food security are very important in the city region, so in Sedibing and the West Rand we are supporting the development of uh, urban agriculture, mm -hmm. but also of course agro-processing, um, milling, canning processing of food is, is, is a very important industry. So I think that uh, all of those are, are areas of focus of the Department of Economic Development and in this budget we have allocated them an amount of 1.3 billion rand mm -hmm. to strengthen the, ro the facilitation of role of provincial government in growing the economy. Look, since the, the end of last year, November last year, we, we have actually spent about 20 million rand uh, for supporting 1,300 farmers in this province. That's included things such as feeding of livestock, irrigation, desilting of dams, and, and so on and so forth. Um, there is a similar amount allocated in today's budget. Mm -hmm. Clearly, one of the, the issues is that that, that, really is, that money is really intended to, to keep people afloat in tough times. It can't compensate for the incredibly hard losses that they've had to suffer. And we know that, uh, that it's going to take time for our farmers to recover. Mm -hmm. I think what we, what we are hoping is that we can help them to keep their breeding stock alive. But, but we, we do acknowledge that this is a very, very devastating time for them and that um, they will nevertheless make substantial losses at this time. I'm very confident that, that the infrastructure delivery of health is on track. Um, we've given them a, a further 2.5 billion, I think it is, in this financial year to continue with the upgrades to a range of hospitals and also new community health facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, many of our provincial health facilities are old. They, they do need upgrading, um, not only so that patients are more comfortable, but also so that uh, doctors have uh, more updated equipment and um, a better place to work. One of our innovations that we're introducing is the digitization of patient files. This is obviously very important because it, it helps the patient because it's going to be much easier to find their files and I think one of the reasons why patients wait a long time is, is because of the search for the file. Sure. But the, the other thing that's very important is that it's going to allow us to improve our revenue collection from hospitals because we will have centralised records with, with centralised understanding of who owes what for what particular service. We are worried at the moment that there's too much leakage um, from the revenue collection in, in hospitals and it's an important aspect of provincial revenue. Um, I think we know that in this province there's 2.5 million voters who are not registered. Most of those voters are young. I think it's important that people understand why they should exercise their democratic right to vote 
and that money is intended to to help them to understand that but also to encourage people to, to register we're hoping there may still be another voter registration weekend yeah. so it would it would really be to assist the IEC to increase visibility and campaign to get young people to to register to vote